Where's the bell? At this point, it should be over. They should be going back to their corners. It was a very the, long round. The bell was Number late. One. Secondly, finally, when the bell rang, Elijah Tillery stuck his face out at Riddick Bowe, and Riddick Bowe just hit it. And you see Rock Newman getting involved in this. Both of them almost falling over the ropes. The fight when Bear unmasked the man called the Amling Out as little more than a muddling mediocrity whose record of 76 wins with 59 KOs was more than somewhat suspect. From the first round on, Bear was able to keep the Man Mountain in front of him at long range then cross over his bazooka-like right, flush on the soon-to-be ex-champion's jaw. And Bear drove a terrific right to Primera's face, and Primera went down for the count of one. Primera is down again, and Primera was up, he is down again. Bear sails into him, Primera is on the rope down, a left hook and a long right, and Primera is down, and he is being pushed away. Canera became a canvas decoration, going down a total of 11 times, sometimes even pulling Bear down with him as he tried to hold on to something, anything. As Canera went down again, Bear went with him. And every time he was taken down by the fallen Canera, Bear would holler, last one up, Sissy. Finally, with nothing to keep him on his feet but a big heart, a helpless, Stumbling Canera appealed to referee Arthur Donovan to stop the fight in the 11th round. Canera is almost through, though. Nobody can do it. And finally, the referee motioned Bear to his corner. Donovan mercifully called a halt to the most one-sided fight ever. Those things like that, it I irritates you good. It. That is yeah. one of the most grotesque things I've ever seen yeah. on a prize fight. Yeah. What is the danger of that? George, can you tell? Yeah, I think maybe he's had, got cracked a little uh, skull. You know, you got bones up there. Sometimes you can get into those bones and make things swell down. I can't see well. I wouldn't let him fight anymore if I was the referee. That thing is going to go all the way down to his eyes. It's a collection of, it's a collection of blood under there. Okay? Right. We're not going to go dangerous to you, but if you feel you can't see, then you shouldn't continue. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you. Blurry. Okay, we're going to stop the fight, I believe. Here's the butt once again. That's the clash of heads which produced the swelling. That's the second one. You can see the swelling begin immediately after that clash of heads. I mean, the swelling has already begun within seconds there after the clash of heads you saw in that replay. And yes, you're right, George. That was the second one. Yeah. That was not the one which occasioned the doctor's it, no. first visit over to Rockman's Corner a little bit earlier. Been non-stop action. Good time. No right. Leonard Left jabbing but getting right. hit too. Good Here. right hand by the ring that time. Knocks Sugar Ray in the ropes and gets away immediately. And what's happening? Duran says no. I think he's quitting. What is he saying, Larry? He says no, I don't understand. He's saying no, no, he quit. I don't understand it. I think Duran quit. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't understand. understand. This is not like Duran. I don't understand. Gentlemen, Roberto Duran. This is not like Duran. Threw his hand up and said, I quit. I don't understand this. And he almost got in a fight with Leonard's brother. The police are in the ring, and we have a very, very unpleasant situation in there. I don't understand. I don't understand. The referee has not declared the fight over yet. Duran suddenly said, I quit. I don't understand it. I don't either. I don't understand it. the fight. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. Richard Un Steele stopped the fight with fewer than five seconds to go. You're going to watch Lou Duva go crazy now. You're going to watch Lou Duva go absolutely berserk. This is one of the most unusual
unusual calls by a referee in the whole history of the sport. Five seconds left. I cannot believe they stopped that fight. From the point of view of Chavez, it is one of the most dramatic comebacks in the history of the sport. Larry, the official time will be 2.58 of the 12th round. He knocked him out with two seconds left. Oh, and some nasty stuff in there. There need to be a bite almost. Holyfield is very unhappy. Look at this. It looked as if Tyson bared his teeth at one stage in the exchange. Yes, bit I his think ear. he bit his ear. That's what Holyfield was in a lot of pain from that. You see the blood on the ear. That was definitely a bite. Well, feelings are running very, very hot indeed in there. Holyfield was outraged by that. Now, what is the referee going to do about that? One point deduction for Tyson. One point deducted from Mike Tyson for biting Holyfield's ear. Now, let's take a look again. Yes, it's, it's just here. He gets into the position there. Watch. You see, he stares there. There, he bites him there. You see him lift his teeth. And Holyfield in agony at that point, trying to rip free. In a, an awful lot of pain. Well, this is getting like a street fight. Hey, why, why did you do that, though, Mike? I mean, was Look that the proper me. response? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I got to go home. My kids are going to be scared of me. Look at me, man. What are you going to do now in terms of your career, Mike? Will you continue to fight? Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Okay. He's got to try to control Holyfield with that jab. Oh dear, oh dear, there's only a parachute he's hit the ropes. I do not believe this clown, where he has come from, unreal. Well, everything happens in the fight game. Take time off, the referee said. I would think so. How on earth did that guy came in like that? Oh my God. Well, Reg, he doesn't know what he is. Yeah, I tell you what, I've never seen so much security, policemen. Only in America can this happen. He's actually hit the canopy above the ring, Reg. Yeah, is it? His parachute is still jammed yeah, up the, there. That's right, and he hit the ropes, though. Yes, he, he actually, his feet were actually right yeah, inside got, the ring. Yeah, he got underneath the canopy. I, oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm glad he didn't fall on us here, Jim, I tell you that. Well, what can we do? That's absolutely ridiculous. See, they've got to pull that uh, parachute down because the, the people who've paid, I mean, up, up to $800 here, remember, $100 to $800, they, they won't be able to see the fight. But I've never seen so many policemen, all like, like sentinels around the, the ropes here, waiting for this clown, whoever he is. I'll tell you what, he, he's made himself famous. Serious, those cuts, so I think uh, Ralph Citro has taken pretty, pretty good care of those with uh, really Poe. Usually a adrenaline swap there, that's all that's permitted by the boxing commissions. Well, Holyfield backing the big man up, Reg, and if he can manage to do this, he certainly shortens the odds that are against him. If he can back Bo up, Reg, it gives him a chance. Holyfield was saying that before the fight, I heard him say it, that I boxed with him as an amateur, I know things have changed since, but if you put pressure on him, You've got him on the run, Bo, you can win the fight. And I didn't do that last time, but I want to do it this time. Bo is actually looking a little bit looser, Reggie. His defences have loosened. Absolutely. He's not quite as tight and compact as he was. I don't know what's going on here, if he's taking a breather, or what's happening here, but he's going to have to tighten up and try to take charge. I wonder if already he's feeling the pace. That was a hectic round, the previous one. Oh. See, just look out for that. Bo waits for him to come in, and he whipped that uppercut in there. You might not have seen that probably. And I don't think Holyfield did either. Well, 
looked to me, Tim, as if some of the people, some of the spectators started to throw punches at him as he as he fell down onto the onto did the Did you ground. see that? Oh yes, I certainly did. Yeah. It looked like they were really doing a job on him. Well he landed uh, on the ring apron. That is an area that is occupied by uh, still photographers. He was very near the bow corner, so there would be uh, some boxing people uh, uh, in that corner, the handlers of Riddick Bow. And then immediately behind him, I believe that is a, 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 a press row behind the first row of, of uh, photographers. I believe that that is also press seating in the few rows that uh, are immediately behind the photographer area, which is right along the ringside itself. Well, we're going to show you once again uh, the the landing here. You see the fighters see it. Now, he's hung up on the ropes here. He's landed literally on the top strand. Obviously, he was trying to land in the ring. He's hung up. Now he's being pulled down. And, and this is where, all right, now we're seeing that the, it would, it would appear that the injuries came from this reaction by the people there. In fact, we see one man swinging a, a radio. And uh, you can see the, the parachutist now, the skydiver, uh, slumped down from uh, apparently a blow. We won't, uh, again, speculate further on exactly how the injuries occurred, just what you can see on the screen. Uh, now, uh, as we have this ongoing delay, let's go to our host, James Brown. All right, Timmy, thank you very much. And I'm standing here with Mark Ratner, who is the executive director of the Nevada Athletic Commission. And Mark, I've got to ask you this question. In all of your years, have you ever seen an occurrence like this? Never. We, it's the furthest thing we would ever expect. Out of the sky, this guy, crazy man comes down. A couple days prior to the fight, it had been set up that if Liston wins, I fight Liston. If Ali wins, he fights Patterson. The fight took place, and Liston takes a dive. Son of Liston said, all I care about is the do re me. And so he was telling me then he was boxing strictly for money. It wasn't like he threw a fight. <laughs> I'm just fighting for money. I mean, to me, he just didn't fancy the fight. He knew Ali was just too fast, too quick for him, and he just, I think, he swallowed it. Liston was scared to death of the black Muslims. He was threatened by the black Muslims, and uh, he took a dive. Everybody knows it. I knew it, and I, and I was quite vocal about it in the ring after. If Liston would have lost legitimately, I'd have no, no qualms, you know. Melvina Lathan, 97-93, all for the winner by unanimous decision, Richard the Alien Grant. So Butler's number eight ranking is going to take a hit. Richard Grant in the mild upset, a unanimous decision victory. Oh, look at this. Butler, whoa! Look at this. Butler just ran Butler, across the ring. Butler just went over there and sucker punched, sucker punched and knocked out Grant. Oh boy, terrible. And the, new and the new commissioner, Ray Kelly, will do something very, very enforceful here. You want to talk about Zab Judah and his antics losing some money in a suspension? James Butler should never be allowed in the ring again. Absolutely never. That's assault. That is assault. He should be arrested on the spot. He should be arrested right on the spot. That is assault and battery. This will be the first test for the new commissioner, Ray Kelly, and I know that he will handle this the right way. What a punk. James Butler. And I, we're going to take a look at it one more time. Richard Grant, unanimous decision win. He turns to Butler to shake his hand, congratulate him. Putting his arm out. Boom. Right there. He was a coward, and he couldn't get him during the fight, and he sucker punched him right there. And now Richard Grant is up on his own feet. Now they're going to escort Butler out of here. And they got him. The police are right there. They're going to escort him out. Ray Kelly, the commissioner, is right behind him. He is being taken out, and he should be thrown in a paddy wagon right now.